Welcome back to the shop. So today we're going to be working on making a propane burner. Um, you can probably already tell if you've watched a couple videos on this that this is not some sort of very original design. Uh, in fact, it's kind of all over the internet uh, in various forms, but hopefully you'll find something interesting in this video because I'm planning on doing it way different than what most people do. And that's basically going to be using as few parts as possible, but also using some welding and machining and other things to kind of make it look a little bit nicer. So what I've gone and done is come up with a, a pretty basic design. And essentially what I'm going to do is machine this down, drill a hole that goes through. One side will be a clearance hole and the other side uh, ideally will be threaded and then I will make a plug machine that down so all I'll have is this little bit coming out I'll make a little bracket that goes here uh, machine that and drill and tap it for a MIG nozzle and of course I will do that all when this is in here so I can ensure that everything's lined up well and that this is in the exact center and uh, I gotta machine this down to some degree anyway or at least strip off the galvanization because the hardware store only had these galvanized pipes. They did not have any in black iron. Uh, if you're going to try this, then obviously black iron is better. If you don't know why, it's because the um, galvanization is zinc, basically. And first time you get this really hot, the zinc is going to burn off and it's horribly toxic. So you really don't want to be breathing that in. So you need to remove it. And in my case, it's on the inside and the outside, which is a serious pain. Uh, also, galvanized fittings are more expensive, so you might as well go with black iron if you can, but this is all I could get, so this is what I'm going to go with. So I went ahead and cleaned up the first fitting. I used a scrap piece of pipe that was a bit shorter than the main piece I was going to use for the burner tube, just to keep it a little closer to the chuck. And I could bring in some support on the end as well after I'd gotten that cleaned up. And then I just kind of went through and took off just enough material to get past the rough cast finish and to make sure I got rid of all the galvanizing. Uh, I thought that this part was going to get substantially hotter than it wound up getting, so I probably didn't need to do this. But if you do have galvanized fittings, it's probably still a good idea to get rid of the galvanization just in case it does wind up getting pretty hot. Then I went ahead and uh, cut the threads out of it, uh, mainly because I was using a 3 8 inch NPT fitting to deliver the gas, which is bigger than what most people use. And a 3 8 NPT fitting is actually like 0.6 inches or thereabouts um, on the outside diameter, and I wanted to give a little extra space to allow air to flow. Then I could use a boring head to go ahead and cut a notch out so I could start my drill bit because I wanted it right in the middle there. And then I used a taper shank drill bit that was just over half an inch to get me pretty close. And then I went back with my boring head to go ahead and just open up that hole to be about the right size for one side of the pipe to just slip into. I then went ahead and milled some flats in the fitting. Not particularly necessary, but I didn't know if I was going to want to tighten this up real tight, and it's just a lot easier to use a wrench. I then went ahead and just welded a scrap piece in the end to act as a plug. Uh, in hindsight, I should have TIG welded this because it's really, really difficult to get uh, airtight welds with flux core MIG welding like this. Uh, unless you just do a continuous weld all the way around, you wind up with little pockets because the outside of the metal obviously is contaminated with the flux. And unless you clean it off really well, you're just kind of screwed. I then went ahead and just machined the weld back. This is the first time, and I, I've managed to break an insert. The, these inserts that I'm using, 
uh, are honestly quite cheap, and I've not been very happy with them. I had some better ones before that were quite a lot stronger. I don't know what the deal is with these. It's just kind of hit or miss with the cheap Chinese junk. Uh, this is the second time, I believe, that I had, I had tried to fill some of the holes. It didn't wind up looking too good. And I was just fitting it into the end because I wanted the far end to be a pretty tight fit. And you, you see me doing that here. I then went ahead and took a, a very small scrap piece that I had. My my boring head was already set up to cut the uh, uh, clearance hole for the diameter pipe that I was using. So I went ahead and just used that to take a nice little notch out of this little scrap piece. Happened to be just the right size, and I went ahead and just took it so that it would kind of hug the pipe. I then went ahead and got smart and TIG welded this in place. Uh, I didn't want to use up the argon before because, well, I'm almost out and it's about 50 bucks every time I get the tank refilled. Yeah, I then wound up uh, realizing that my piece was sort of coming off, so I was heating it up and, and pounding it back down. And after a couple tries, I managed to uh, get it to lay pretty flat. Probably would have been okay with it the way that it was. It wasn't very much, but, you know, in the interest of kind of making it look decent. I then went ahead and welded up the edges, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that on the first try that this was sealed up fairly well. Um, TIG welding, I tend to have a really, really easy time getting completely airtight welds. Uh, probably just because it's a much cleaner process, and it... it just ends up a lot better. I really love TIG welding, um, especially over flux core MIG, just because it's so clean and you don't get spatter. You can kind of see I'm not actually even wearing a, a welding coat in the shot because there's just no spatter to speak of. I've seen uh, some people TIG weld without gloves, which I think is kind of dumb, but I mean, more power to you, I guess. I then went ahead and silicon bronze brazed this in. Uh, like I said, these fittings are some sort of cast material. I'm not sure exactly what, but you can't weld them. I then went ahead and center drilled and tapped the hole in the bottom for uh, a MIG tip. And off camera, I obviously went with an indicator and made sure the hole was as centered as I possibly could. Then went ahead and chamfered it. And you can see the final result turned out pretty good down there. Uh, you can't really see into the pipe too well, but uh, off camera I leak tested everything before drilling that hole. Uh, I then could take a MIG tip, and this was a 30 thousandths MIG tip, and I was opening it up to 60 thousandths. Um, I'm not sure if that's critical, but that's what I've seen other people doing, so it seemed to work pretty well. I wound up having to do this twice, though because the drill bit wandered quite a lot the first time. There was an old tip that I was using and I suspect that something was stuck in there.